Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time joining with us. We're delighted to have you as well. Well, this morning, which is Friday morning, is dedicated to having younger, fresher voices contributing here to our morning devotionals. And we're delighted to have Brother Austin Seymour is going to be providing us with a devotional this morning. So without any further delay, uh, let's hear from Brother Austin Seymour. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Good morning, and God bless you. Welcome to this beautiful Friday morning. Um, I'd like to thank Pastor for giving me another opportunity to bring a devotion to you, each of you. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into prayer. God, we thank you for another opportunity, another beautiful day to worship you, to serve you. God, we pray that you'll just wrap your arms around us, keep us safe, and bless this devotion and touch each and every one of our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today I'd like to talk about being critically wounded and yet persuaded. Um, a wound is a simple, excuse me, is a wound is simply an injury or an affliction. To be critically wounded is to be so badly hurt that there is little to no chance for recovery or resulting in death. Um, I would like, that's just a definition, but I would like to give an overview of several different stories in the Bible that I feel demonstrate people who have been critically wounded. And yet they never quit and God always came through for them on their behalf. So first I like to dive into first king or excuse me second kings 4. We read about the Shunammite woman who made a special place for the man of God in her home. She was given a promise and shortly thereafter that promise was born. It was a child little ways down in the scripture that child passes away and yet she never lost her faith in God or the man of God in with David in first Samuel 30 we were he was returning from to Ziklag excuse me with his men and found that their city had been burned their families had been taken captive and David was looking at a group of men who was distraught and ready to kill him. And yet David kept the faith and didn't doubt God. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we read of the same account of one woman who was found with an issue of blood. This issue had plagued her 12 long years. And she had dealt with many doctors. She had spent all she had. And she had enough in her to reach out, to crawl, to push, and have faith in God. Lastly, in Luke 8, we read about the man of the Gadareans who was possessed with a legion of devils, who was tormented day and night, who also tormented those around him. And yet, when Jesus stepped onto the scene, the man ran and fell, wounded at his feet. There was still something in that man who wouldn't give up, that wouldn't give up. Many times I feel like we read over these accounts in the Bible and we so readily focus on the miraculous, obviously, but we forget about the human aspect of each of these individuals. These are not just stories in a storybook. These are real accounts of real people with real emotions, real family and friends. They had these things that were devastating happened to them. This is not fictional. How many of us have been blindsided by a traumatic loss just as the Shunammite woman? Or how many of us have experienced our households in shambles, our families scattered, and maybe even facing betrayal by those who are around us that we trusted, such as David? Maybe you're dealing with a long-term illness pain, suffering for years, such as the woman with the issue of blood. Or maybe you just have been 
wounded by life, and you see absolutely no way up as the man in the Gadarenes. Well, there is hope today, and there is a way to be healed. But you cannot give up. You cannot get frustrated and walk away. You must press on. You must press towards that mark. This is where, for me, it was a little bit of a struggle because I wanted to focus on we have all have these personal wounds in our life. Many they may be, or few may be, but they are significant to each and every one of us. I myself could speak out of experience of being critically wounded to the point where I had to weigh the option, am I going to live for God or am I going to stay wounded and bleeding and never recover? In 1 Timothy 6, 12 through 16, it says to fight the good fight of faith. We have got to have such a determination and a love for the things of God, regardless of our wounds, regardless of how devastating they may be, and find ourselves bleeding on an altar instead of others, because we can damage others with our wounds. It doesn't matter how bad it hurts, I want the mentality of a bulldog. I want to lock on to the things of God and the word of God and the truth like nothing else matters. We sing that song. I want to dance like nobody else is watching. I want to sing like nobody else is listening. I want to live for God like nothing else matters. I want to challenge each and every one of us. And I feel the Holy Ghost when I'm saying this in Romans 8, 35, 30, 39, excuse me, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress or persecution or famine, nakedness, peril or sword? As it is written, excuse me, as it is written for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. There's that bulldog grip on this truth. I am persuaded nothing that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So again, this is a challenge to each and every one of us. I do not want to belittle a wound in anyone's life. I don't want my wounds to be belittled. But how we deal with them and where we take them is very critical. We have a challenge here and a, and a witness that if we lay hold on this truth, God will heal us. In Isaiah 53 and 5, just paraphrasing, that It says that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes we are healed. And I want us to always remember Romans 8, 28, and that we know all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. I've found in my life that there are many different types of wound, whether they be mental, emotional, physical, with relationships or self-inflicted. God has a way of bringing everything full circle as long as we remain dedicated to him, his word, and to his way, and to this beautiful doctrine. And I love that God has patience with each and every one of us. Wounds take time. Wounds take prayer. Wounds take fasting. Wounds take coaching. And God always seems to make a way and make up the difference where there's something lacking. That is all I have for you today. But I'd like to 
just to press on. I feel a great urgency and an anticipation for Sunday service. I believe God is healing all of our wounds. I believe our church is going to that next step. We can feel it. There's a growing anticipation every service. I believe we have something great that is about to happen this coming Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and thank you.